to leave the country in order to leave the country. <laughs> I know it sounds confusing, but let me explain. So my friend Leon phones me and he's like, Hey dude, you want to go with me to Los Angeles? I'm like, hell yeah man, that sounds awesome. When are we leaving? He's like, we're leaving in like a month, dude. I'm like, I don't have a visa, dude. He's like, so get your visa, dude. How hard can it be? <laughs> well, it turns out it can be quite a painful process. So right after my phone call with Leon, I immediately started looking for US embassies all around South Africa to get the soonest available appointment, which was like within two years. So that's obviously way too late and it's ridiculous. So I started phoning friends and people I know who have their visas and they all explained it takes time. Eventually, while phoning around and talking to people, I got in touch with this woman that explained what she did was she just hopped on a plane and flew over to Botswana and stayed in a fancy hotel and had a little holiday while she waited for her paperwork to be processed and then after all of that hopped on a private jet and came home and obviously this seemed like something that I couldn't afford. This is just something that didn't seem financially possible at the time. Little did I know that the capital city of Botswana is just across the border and it's about like 400 kilometers from where I stayed. So it was totally possible for me to drive there get my visa at the US Embassy in Gaborone and come back home. So I started planning my trip. So the plan was to hop in my car, drive off to the border, enter Botswana, visit the US consulate in the capital city of Botswana, wait a couple of days, get my US visa, drive back to South Africa and fly happily ever after with Leon to Los Angeles. That's the plan. So I only had two problems. One, I didn't have any place to stay yet and I needed to find accommodation that was affordable and also something that could be worth my while to have a great experience. And two, I never left the country before. My whole life I've been in South Africa. I immediately looked for accommodation that stood out for me and the first place I found which looked really cool was the Mokolodi Backpackers. So I immediately sent them a mail and explained to them that I'm a filmmaker and in exchange for accommodation I'll shoot an ad for them. They got back to me and they were like yeah, let's do this. We can't wait to see you. So after filling in an application, I eventually got an appointment at the US consulate in Gaborone. How do you pronounce that? I just feel like... I... Gaborone. 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 Gaborone, I guess. I was not expecting that. Got an appointment. I had accommodation. Now it's time to head over to Botswana. So, I kind of really need to pee, so I always see people catching a wee next to the road and I think to myself, you know, have you no shame? I'm giving it a try. So I head down and I get to the border and it's like, damn, this seems so easy. Boy, oh boy, was I wrong. This was not so easy. <laughs> Hello, I'm getting you. Am I going the right way? I get to the gate, super confident, <laughs> here we go. And they're like, no, where's your gate pass? I'm like, my what now? Is that not this paper? Gate pass, which one is that? <laughs> is that this one? I'm so confused. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, I do so I reverse out there, feeling like an idiot, but it's okay, just go get your gate pass. So I form forms, get my gate pass. I'm like, is that it? Is this everything? They're like, yes, that's it, you can go now. I'm like, are you sure? They're like, yeah. I should have all the necessary and correct documents now, so yeah. So I head on to the gate and they're like, where's your gate pass? Stole no gate pass. Do I have to? I'm like, but what, what was this paper that I formed in? They're like, no, that's not a gate pass. But they still don't tell me what it is. We're supposed to wear masks here, so let me just do that in case. It's me again. <laughs> this time I can bring in the, the necessary documents. Is that that? We don't have the gate. They're like, no, get out the car. I'm like, oh no, oh no, this is bad. Yeah, okay. It was so scary. I thought I was in so much trouble. They're like, go oh, get your gate pass, leave your car. And I run back. I'm like, finally, here's my gate pass. They said, this is the gate pass. Here we go. They're like, yes, but you didn't pay. You're supposed to pay. 
I'm like, but nobody told me that. When I, Every time I ask them, is that it? They say, yes, you can go now. Hopefully this time they let me through the gate. And I run back. Now I am officially allowed to enter the country, even though they've probably flagged me for something. Officially, I think it's safe to uh, enter the country now. <laughs> So I enter the country and immediately my phone has no signal, no internet, no Google Maps, and I have no idea where to go. So I started this journey feeling like Peter McKinnon, but uh, <laughs> that slowly changed when um, I went through a whole complicated border process and my phone's data isn't working, so I gotta get a new SIM. But I gotta run up and down and collect documents from my car because they need my passport and my ID. Turns out this was just as painful as being at the border. It wasn't just queue and get a sim. I had to head out again, run back to the car, get my passport and run back. And I was just stressing so much because the person that I was going to stay at the first day, I had to meet at a certain time at a certain place. Luckily, just as I came out the shop, he gave me a call and he's like, hey, I'm at the mall. Where are you? I'm like, I'm also at the mall. So I met up with Mark. We had a little braai and we had a couple of beers and I just, I could find Finally relax. Day two, on my way to the US Embassy, about to sort out my visa. So I drive off to the Embassy, I get there, everything's good, I'm prepared, I got all my documents. Lulu, is this the entrance to the um, US Embassy? It was just one little problem. Due to the exchange rate, the amount of money that I had brought was not the same. So I had to run down the road looking for an ATM so I could draw money as soon as possible. So we're still doing the mask thing, but apparently in public I can take it off. So just like yesterday, having some issues here. Apparently it's more expensive than anticipated because $160 is apparently 2,048 pullouts, but I need to go draw some more money. So again, <laughs> queue there, go through a scary embassy process. No phones allowed. They take everything at the door. You collect it as you get out. They said they'll get back to me and I must come back the next day. And now I'm heading out to Game City Mall. You can see there's monkeys on the roof. There they go. <laughs> now we're off to the backpackers. Look at that view. So yeah, we are at the Moklodi Backpackers, where I'm going to be spending a couple of days shooting an ad for them. Really excited, really cozy place, it's really cute. It's a nice little atmosphere, with a couple of people camping out here. Cool vibe, cool place, really excited to be staying here for a couple of days. And look, here's a chicken. Hello. And this is the room I'm going to be staying in. Not bad. Got a cozy little bed. All my junk over here, my little mini fridge thingy with all my beers in. I get to the backpackers and I immediately start looking around, checking out the vibe. It's a small, cozy venue with a few chalets, a couple of tents, swimming pool, and there's this communal kitchen, bathroom area, and then there's this like entertainment lounge area with these ornaments and couches and tables. Just such a vibe in the place. And the first thing I noticed was obviously all the animals. There's so many animals everywhere. My social anxiety was stressing me out so much. I feel so uncomfortable doing this. And I bet when I watch this, I'm gonna be like, why oh, were you being so awkward? But I met this group of people that was so friendly. They made me feel so comfortable. And they invited me to join them at the Mokolodi Bush Kitchen, which is just down the road. So we all went for a little walk down the road and I got to know them a bit better. So Russians are probably the closest uh, taste-wise to our uh, sausages back home, back in Europe. And we started hanging out there, having a couple of drinks. So I met these cool people at the Mokolodi Backpackers, and now we're having a beer at this restaurant. What's the name of this place again? Mokolodi. Mokolodi Bush Kitchen. Bush Kitchen. Mokolodi Bush Kitchen. Really nice venue. It was so amazing how welcome this group of people made me feel. Um, so thank you guys so much. That really, that meant something to me. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. <laughs> So the next morning, I hopped in the car, went to the U.S. consulate in Gabs. Oh, cool. now we're back on our way to the U.S. Embassy. Yeah, boy. I don't know why I'm like this. There we go, done and dusted. U.S. visa sorted out. I can legally go to Los Angeles now. Now I just need money. <laughs> But yeah, it's awesome. I'm all sorted. I've achieved what I came to do in Botswana. I got my visa. It's time to start shooting this ad for the backpackers. So today is day three and I'm here in the chill area to get a couple of nice shots for the promotional video I'm going to be making. Let's get shooting. 
at this clock. Like, I'm not into antique stuff, but this is really nice. Go to bikes, check out this bike. But, um, yeah, check out this cat. Meow. <laughs> Cool, so I'm done and now I'm busy doing all of the rooms. Uh, but one thing you want to do is you want to switch on all of the lamps and every little light. Ah, there we go. This is going to be really nice. It's going to put a nice textures on the walls, get as much light as possible in. Light's always fascinating. So yesterday we uh, took a walk down to the restaurant. But now I can't find my lens cap anywhere. I don't see anything, so on my way back up and we'll see. <laughs> One of the people staying there at the backpack is David came to me and he's like, hey, um, you, you're making a video for the place and that's cool. And I also do some video stuff. Um, do you think we can maybe shoot a bit at the restaurant tonight? So I'm like, yeah, of course. So we head over to the restaurant and just for fun, we start filming stuff and I sort of just show him some of my techniques and we're just all having a good time. I'll record it static like this. I'll be like, one, two, three, that's enough one edit. Now I'll do this. I'll be like, that looks cool. Continue. I'll punch in, do a rotation like this as I drop it down sort of wiggle left to right nice and slow and the owners are like hey what are you guys doing i don't know where i just got the confidence maybe it was from the vibe david was giving off because he's like this guy's a filmmaker and he shoots ads and i'm like hell yeah i am and i whip out my card and i'm like i can make an ad for you too seeing that i'm on holiday you know i don't mind doing it for a free meal and a thousand bucks just so that i can you know cover some expenses on the way and they're like yeah of course do it David and Marta told me that the next day they need to leave, but they need to go fetch a rental car. So the next morning early, we wake up at like 5 a.m. We quickly get ready, we hop in the car, another guy joins us and we drive off to this big dam. The sun just popped over. We just stop and we all jump out the car, grab our cameras and run out. And I immediately start taking videos, start taking pictures and it's beautiful. So now I got a beautiful sunrise picture in Cape Town, South Africa, and now I've also got one here in Botswana. And it was so cool to experience this. Afterwards, we hop in the car and we're off to go drop them off at their rental place. We get there and the owner is this Israeli guy. Good morning everyone from Botswana, where the sun is shining all the time. Have a nice day from Horizons Car Rental. Immediately he's like, have you guys had coffee? I'm gonna make you some coffee. How's it going? Cheers. <laughs> Authentic coffee, man. The best. It's apparently called mud coffee, and it was the first time I had that, and it was very nice. So this is that, what? Israeli coffee. It's yeah, amazing. It's really I like it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, man. It was just such a cool guy, um, and I'm, I was just so glad I was there. Afterwards, we drove back, and... We stopped at this cool little market thingy, something I definitely never do in South Africa, but, uh, you know, in Botswana, it looks pretty damn cool. It was just like guys playing pool in the middle of the road and they bought some food and some snacks and it was just a really cool experience being there. It's, it's such an experience to be able to walk through one of these and there was all sorts of cool stuff happening there. So afterwards we drove back to the backpackers and that's where David and them left. David is leaving us. <laughs> so remember I lost my lens cap and I went walking up and down for about a kilometer to look for the thing while well, it was here in my camera bag <laughs> at the back the whole time. After all of that I went over to the Mokulodi bush kitchen where I had to shoot there. Look at these guys. <laughs> so I just finished shooting a couple of shots here at the Mokulodi bush kitchen. And then I'll be back later during golden hour to get some beautiful shots of the landscape and the nature and the animals and stuff. Now I'm heading back to the backpackers 
gonna have a beer and then uh, we'll be back later. It was just such a fun experience. It's a beautiful venue. Definitely one of my favorite places I've ever been at. It's got such a vibe with the lights. And they make these cocktails and it's just such an experience. I had such a good time shooting an ad for them as well. So it's finally weekend and I'm going to be camping out for two days yet the same place. I just moved out from one of the rooms into a uh, tent and I'm going to be camping out for a few days just relaxing and enjoying the venue before I'm heading back to South Africa. <laughs> The next day, I finalized the Mokunori Backpackers advert by doing the final interview shot with Hendrik, the owner. After that, had a great time and Hendrik's like, you know what, before you head out, grab yourself a t-shirt. So he gave me this awesome t-shirt, so that was really cool. Thanks a million Hendrik, I love the shirt. Every time I bry, I wear the shirt, so thank you. And I headed over to the Mokunori Game Reserve. I get to the game reserve and they tell me, dude, your car is not going to make it through these roads. So they have to drop me off with this big truck. So it's about a three kilometer drive to the campsite and then, um, then we're there, ready to camp in the bush. Just unpack everything. Yeah, I am. Here's my campsite. Now time to pitch everything up. Finally set up camp here yeah, in the Mukuluri Game Reserve at the campsite. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's pitch black. I'm gonna walk down here on my camp chair and have a beer. So last night I got to the Mokolori Game Reserve campsite, but uh, it was too dark to show you around. So this is what it looks like. I'm in the bush. I've got this whole stand. It's quite nice. I've got my tent back there. And here's the uh, the shower. This is quite cool. You can have a nice open plan shower. Uh, I got a nice little fire pit. Busy making coffee now. There we go. Cheers. So before I can have a warm shower, then you've got to make a fire under the geyser to warm up the water. And that's what we call a donkey. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's hop in the shower real quick. I gotta say, it's um, feels a little weird. Hey, what's up? I'm here in Botswana, and I thought this might be a lovely place to decide who wins that hundred rand for that little giveaway I was doing. The winner is. Congratulations and uh, just get in touch with me with your banking details and I'll make sure you get that cash. And uh, everybody else, stick around. There will be more giveaways in the future. But uh, yeah, let's get back to the rest of this video. And while you have a great day, I'm going to run away from that lion. Before I went to Botswana, I met this guy called France at a chopper function at the Air Force Base at Swarko. And he's like, oh, I'm in Botswana, you must definitely, let me know when you're there. He pulls in there, he's like, hop in the car, we're going on a game drive. Meet France. Hello, hello. Cool guy, he picked me up, we're going for a bit of a drive and uh, checking out the game reserve. And 
while I was with Franz, he was telling me the story of this broken down bridge. I thought that felt awfully familiar, so I checked on maps. There at the Gabaronet Dam where we went to take our sunrise photo, I remember on maps seeing like a broken bridge. So I asked him if that's the same place and he's like, yeah, so apparently there's a rich history behind what happened there. But last morning I woke up early. It's now 6 a.m. I'm getting ready to capture the sunrise. Hopefully it looks nice. Yeah, like always a beautiful sunrise. Look at this hat. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I came into the country looking like a local and now I'm leaving looking like a full-blown tourist wearing merch and my safari clothes. <laughs> Big shout out to Hendrik at the Mokolodi Backpackers for giving me this shirt. It's awesome and thank you. Say hello Lebo. <laughs> Lebo just picked me up and now she's gonna take me back to reception and then I'm gonna be on my way. After they dropped me off and I packed my car, I just first had to go stop at this bridge and just see what that's about. I know I'm not gonna drive to the edge and drive off. Like, uh, I know I'm not gonna do it, but yes, for a second, I just got this panic inside. <laughs> so this used to be a road. And I'm assuming that's the bridge for the, the train track that was blown up. So I get there to this bridge and I take some photos and a couple of video clips and I just start thinking about this whole trip that I had. It all starts running through my mind again, just like what you've got this place where there's so much history, where so much happened so many years ago. In the same place, so much happened for me in such a small time frame. And in that moment, it just brought back those memories of that beautiful sunrise, of that moment where we got there and I was with a group of strangers that felt like friends. And I was in a different country, traveling all by myself. And I was on this adventure, finding a beautiful sunrise at this amazing dam in nature, between the mountains, and just experiencing all these emotions all at the same time. And everything coming together at that one place. That one place, which is where I took my favorite photo of 2022. To me, this image means friendship. It means experience. It means facing your anxiety, getting out of your comfort zone, making new friends, being in nature, traveling, and all these experiences, everything is just in this one image. And that's what it will always mean to me. After getting home, I might not have been able to go with to Los Angeles because I was too late, but this isn't a story about a missed opportunity. This is a story about an experience. And I got bit by that travel bug so hard, I'm not gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say, see you on the next trip.